Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for DockerCon 2015. This is what the center of the universe is for DevOps. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm my co-host, Jeff Frick, general manager of our Cube business here in Palo Alto. Our next guest is entrepreneur Patrick Riley, co-founder and CEO of Kismatic, hot startup. Uh, great to see you again. We had an interview at OpenStack. Great, welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be here. So <laughs> DockerCon, as Stu Miniman at Wikibon said, is the center of the universe for DevOps. Indeed. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, certainly growing community, small, but it has a Linux feel to me. Like I, I was talking to uh, Alex uh, Conrad from Forbes uh, just before and I said, he asked about standardization. I said, you know, this is a forcing function right now because Amazon's numbers are out. Oracle's now putting out numbers. Amazon's going to do maybe, they say seven, I think 10, or Dave Vellante thinks 10. Um, Oracle just announced last quarter in cloud over 300 plus million in one quarter. Yeah. That's big business. The shift is here, it's here. So if the community doesn't rally around open standards, it's, that's what happened with Linux. They were forced to come together because if they didn't come together at a certain time, yeah. industry's toast. So I'm very excited about the Open Container Foundation, kind of our kumbaya moment, like everyone's coming back together. We don't have to make choices. One of my big frustrations were with some of our clients, um, they didn't know what to bet on. You know, they thought they were solid, they thought they were going down the path of Docker, and then with CoreOS doing Rocket, all of a sudden they're like, okay, wow, we have to pick the winner. Or we, it's like the VHS Betamax kind of argument. You know, you don't want to end up with both players, and no matter which one you chose, you have to have that kind of contingency of, you know, what do we do in case the other one wins? So having this happen, having it come back together, be one, you know, core thing, and having the Linux Foundation behind it, you know, it's really powerful. Yeah, and that, and then what you're really getting at is, if this continues, it would have been an absolute screeching halt from a customer standpoint. Yeah, and it would have and it would have opened up the market potentially to some other, you know, tertiary approach that, yeah. you know, some whale pun intended coming into the Docker ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> big, we big ocean theme here. Yeah. Um, but Patrick, yeah. I want to get your thoughts, right? So at OpenStack, we see that DevOps is cloud is hot. We want everyone no brainer. Everyone's going there. Software methodologies have changed. The now cloud era is upon us. Agile, you name it, it's all happening. What's the challenges right now? I mean, you guys and your business is about orchestration, Kubernetes. What's going on at that, the value of part of the stack? Yeah, I think the, the most difficult part for us is the education and just getting people comfortable with you know, how they do things, making sure that they're doing it the right way. We start simply by trying to get them to look at their CI CD approach, like how are they actually building the software, how are they testing it, and you know, ultimately, how can we get them to get things to production quicker? Um, you know, in the keynote the other day, we, we saw where people are saying, oh, well, we pushed to production three times last month, now it's more like we pushed to production 3,000 times last month. So people are, you know, once they have the tooling in place, much more comfortable to, you know, getting developers, you know, newfangled ideas like to production quicker. Um, so we find a big part of that is education, making people, people feel comfortable about the tooling and able to kind of go full bore, you know. Give the background on Kismatic for the folks out there. Your company started, young company, entrepreneurial base right now. What's the status, where are you guys growing? What's the, give us the update on Kismatic products, shipping, yeah. customers. Yeah, so Kismatic is, uh, you know, our mission is to be enterprise support for Kubernetes. So we're all former Mesosphere, uh, we come from distributed systems background. You know, we, we know how to do this stuff. Uh, but we're a small team. We're only seven people. You know, right now, um, we we haven't disclosed our, our funding as of yet, but we're we're in good shape there. And the customers that we're going after are the people that we think are the most likely to get to production. Uh, we won't even do our paid POCs with customers now until they sign an LOI that they have an intent to go to production with Kubernetes. Um, and just everyone. Is that because there's so much demand for there's POCs? There's so much demand. Or that you guys are being selective with your time? No, or it, both? There's so, it's both, basically. There's so much demand. We actually have a, 
what I thought was a fairly high price for our paid POCs, and that was not enough of a gate. So putting the LOIs in. Raise prices. Raise prices. Keep yeah. raising prices so people say no, then you know where the line is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, you know, with the POCs, we're really trying to drive towards, like, what is the executive summary at the end? What is the architectural review that's going to get them to production? You know, how can we help them, you know, you know get there? And I don't want to just be a, a training shop, you know, so I'm not in a good place to do yeah, that. Yeah, you don't want to be just services. Yeah. But services are a good business to prime the pump while the market's developing. Correct. So you learn a lot from your customers. Yeah. So one of the approaches we've taken with our POCs is that we actually, each one's better than the previous. So we use a Git repo. We use that same Git repo for the next group with a different name, and all the lessons we learned in the previous one aid the next one to be even better. Uh, and we use a Slack channel for the customer to talk with us. And the thing we find is that even though the POC is you know a few weeks back, a month back, they're still in that Slack channel, they're still talking, they're still putting in their POC repo, they're still asking questions, and they ultimately make it better for every single customer that's you know comes after them, which is kind of exciting. So, I got to ask you, what are the lessons that you've learned that can be magnified from your experience? You're saying you're, the POCs you're learning from each one. What are some of the things that you've learned over the past few months that so, have changed your mind on how the market's going? Well, I'll Or step, validated yeah, well, your approach. I'll step back that, you know, we're just now to the, the V1 of Kubernetes. So we're doing the V1 launch event on the 21st at OzCon. Um, and now we finally have a stable API. So one of the most difficult things about doing the POCs to date has been that the API is, there's been so much churn. So when I'm doing a POC and I'm telling them to do this, and this is the way we show them with a you know, beta three API, and when it changes two weeks later and, and has you know, different things that they have to do or we change flags on the command line, it becomes really difficult and they think things are broken. So a big lesson I've learned is to make sure that we communicate those changes in the same way you know, to users so that they know the upgrade, you know, upgrade path to keep things working. Um, and now that we have V1, I'm excited that you know we have a solid API. We're not, we're not going to have that. And I think a very, you know, back to the open container comment. A very unfortunate thing has kind of happened in this space this year with the the fracturing, you know, of the container format because it put so many people that were you know, really gun ho, ready to go all in, you know decide, okay, I've got to step back because there's this war now going on between two formats. So I'm glad that we've, we've yeah. gotten that behind us. What do you, as an entrepreneur who has an interest in the future of the ecosystem, cloud in particular is just a money maker, what's your take on DockerCon this year? Are you happy with what you're seeing? Um, what areas do you think is missing or should be added? Just general commentary, what's your take? So I'm really excited about DockerCon. I mean, to see this many people um, here, everyone's very exuberant. They want to go home. They want to experiment with the things they've learned. I just want to keep this energy and pace, you know, moving forward. I think experimentation, you know, that kind of mindset is what really drives the industry forward. So all of these people now have this tooling. They can go and and try new things. And I I, I hope that this time next year, next year's DockerCon, it's even bigger and you know more exciting. As an entrepreneur, what's the biggest thing that you've learned about yourself? Uh, in this startup versus others? Uh, well, that I actually need sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you get the work done? You're seven guys, you're doing POCs, you're here yeah. on the Cube, you're out networking, doing deals. I mean, you got to wear a lot of hats, right? Yeah, we definitely wear a lot of hats. I mean, my team's uh, all people that I trust, uh, that helps you know quite a bit. And you know, to be fair, the, the boundaries between companies are pretty blurry at this point. I would definitely say we are a container you know, community. I get a lot of support from Solomon at Docker. I get a lot of support from the folks at Google Cloud Platform. I mean, in a lot of ways, even though I'm a seven-person company, you know, I have upwards of 45 engineers at Google, like able to help and like drive things forward. And and it does definitely feels like an extended family. It doesn't feel like I'm a walled garden. So I'm a skeptic. Pretend I'm my name's Bob, and I'm a skeptic. Bob the skeptic. You guys are in a crowded space. How do you compete? I don't see you winning. What's your answer to that? So <laughs> you say Bob? I say Shut Bob. The <laughs> <laughs> Shut no. the hell up. Go pounce in. I almost said the F word again, my, but my, we my, don't get censored anyway. We're my the, we're the cube. Are not high enough. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think I think the thing for me is if we look at Google Cloud Platform and what they're trying to do with Kubernetes, it's coming from a company that has two billion containers a week launched. Almost all their payloads are running inside of containers. Uh, it works for them. They're giving it to the community. We're trying to provide enter enterprise support for that. 
and allow you to do it on systems you already have. So I'm not asking you to throw out Red Hat. I'm not asking you to throw out Ubuntu. Like, just install Kubernetes on top of those So you things. could win no matter what scenario, in your mind? In my mind, like, we are actually covering the bases pretty well. Short of Google deciding, you know what, we're done with Kubernetes, we don't want to do this anymore, like, that's, that's the only that's fear That's a fatal I flaw? That's the fatal flaw. So I think if we can grant, you know, in Kubernetes in particular, if we can grant the IP to a foundation, much like we have done now with the Open Container Foundation, and not have Google necessarily be the, you know, the gatekeeper of that, um, that would be the next level of success. You know, I mean, every Kubernetes. business has a fatal flaw. I mean, think about it, you know. I mean, I, I just tend to trust Google's opinion of how to do things when they, you know, they're all in. It's not like they're dabbling in containers. They've been doing this for yeah, years. Yeah. Google's they, definitely all in on Kubernetes. I talked to the guys over there, Craig McLucky and everyone else. They are, cloud business is booming. Yes. So, yeah. all right, so um, talk about the foundation. There was a thread I read on GitHub that you were actually mentioned on February 13th, some sort of haymaker, I wouldn't call it a haymaker, comment <laughs> on GitHub. There was a thread that Solomon was talking about, squabbling over namespaces, DNS namespaces. Yeah. yeah, I forget what context it was, something small, trivial. But the point was, he was like, hey guys, stop the charades, let's get back down to business. And you just said, hey, we should start a foundation. Was yeah. that the seed that started it all? Yeah, I mean, I, I just personally felt that we need to have this kind of, more of a consortium effort, you know, let's not have these company lines, let's not play politics, let's get to where we're actually servicing the, the user in the correct way. Uh, it's very frustrating, you know, to me when, you know, a customer comes to me and they want to hit the pause button because they're uncomfortable with which direction to choose when we, yeah. it's just unnecessary. I always say to Dave, you know, it's like nailing jello to a wall, but now the other jello analogy is when you put jello in the fridge, it comes together at some point, it just forms jello. <laughs> is, is this the moment where everything comes together for Docker in your opinion? You think OCP is that moment? Or is there more things that have to happen on, on the community side? So I think from my standpoint, I look at Docker as being like big D Docker and little D Docker, right? There's the Docker community and there's the Docker company. And and for me, I, I want to make sure that, you know, Docker the company is set up for success to provide tooling and products, you know, for people to actually move to containers and away from, you know, legacy approaches. And I want things to be done in a governed way that's open and, and inclusive, not exclusive. So. All right, well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. We've been following your success. We saw you at OpenStack. Again, perfect storm for developers. It's an application-centric, programmable infrastructure. It needs orchestration. It needs Kubernetes. Um, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. CEO of Kismatic here, Patrick Riley on theCUBE. We'll be back more wall-to-wall, uh, -wall, day two coverage. Kind of coming to an end. A lot of people are strolling out now, the keynotes. This is theCUBE. We'll be back more from live in San Francisco where all the action's happening in cloud, in DevOps, after this short break.